Hello. Today I want to introduce you to the new artist support pledge prints that I'm making. So these are prints that I'm going to have in my shop later and I'm just starting them out and it's a really good opportunity to show you how I'm going to produce a multi-block print using a key block. So these are the two prints that I'm going to be working on. Those of you who go to, who attend live stream are probably familiar with our cat Doris and that's her sister Betty, our black cat, who doesn't make an appearance much. And before I go any further, I apologise for the rain. It is tipping it down again, so you've probably got percussion as well as me speaking. So in a minute, I want to show you how I've already started editing and working out the colour layers for this print and how I'm going to transfer that print onto various blocks. But let me just show you here um, with this print. What I've got is a key block. So here's the black and white image you see here. That's the lino block for that. And here is one of the colour blocks that I haven't cut out yet and as you can see I've transferred the image onto that colour block ready for the cutting so I'm going to show you how to do that over a couple of films so that it's nice and accurate for multi-block printing. So to go back to my picture of Doris who is busy scrunching up one of my drawings in this image what I did was a drawing and then I cut this, this um, black and white block, which is my master block. So it's kind of got outlines around every part of the image. And once I printed it, I realised that actually I had made the foreground and the paper too complicated. I'd kind of overdone it. And so I've decided to edit it. Now, when I do a multi-block like that, that quite often happens. There's quite a lot of editing along the way. So what I did was to get myself a colour pencil and I did lots of colouring in. And what I've worked out is that I need to get rid of quite a lot of the jumble in the foreground and just leave these two sheets of paper that she's stomping on. So I've got to cut those out. So what I did to make the corrections, here is my lino block, which you can see I've, <laughs> I've written myself a little message here because there's a couple of things when I'm editing out this jumble is I need to be really, really careful because I need to remember, of course, everything is in reverse so that I need to make sure that the right bit is coming out and I'm not making any mistakes. So I've taken a red china graph pencil a waxy pencil and I've actually scribbled out along all the areas that need to come out and where there's a line just along here and I want to be really sure I don't take that line out because that's the edge of the paper that is staying so hence the not the line piece of masking tape and I do this sort of message on a masking tape quite often. It's really, really helpful because when I'm cutting, I kind of go into this lovely trance and it's so easy just to keep going and cut the wrong bit out. So that's, that's a little bit of editing that needs to be done and a bit of chopping out that I need to do on that block. But to go back to the picture, I also needed to decide how many colours I was going to have and um, where the colours were going to be. So the colours that I'm going to use for this block is obviously I have my black and I have the white of the paper, but I also want a transparent grey for doing shadows and I want a nice sort of rich yellow ochre colour, um, which is the colour of Doris's coat and um, I'm probably also going to use it for the background. So this is, I have these two colours here and the black and the white. So with something like this, it's fairly simple. I know that Doris is going to have to have this yellow ochre pretty much all over her because the, her coat is quite brindled. So it'll have that orange going through it overlaid with the black. And she's got white feet, so I'll know that I don't want any orange down there. But I also want to use that 
for, I'm sorry, I'm calling it orange. I said yellow ochre to begin with, didn't I? Well, sort of cat colour. Um, so I also want to use it for the background, but I don't want the background to compete with Doris. I want um, Doris to be nice and bright and forward in the picture. And I want the background to do its job as a background and be further back. So that's where the transparent grey comes in. I will overprint that ochre with transparent grey in the background, not on Doris, just in the background. So immediately the background is knocked back by the transparent grey and Doris stays nice and bright. But the transparent grey will be useful for her because I can put in that, you know, those classic frown lines that she's got, like tabby cat have that that kind of darker fur here so I'm going to use the grey to put in those lines there and I can also use it where I need some shadows like maybe in her ear there and where her feet just to add a little bit of texture and detail to her feet there and wherever there's shadow in the paper the paper is going to stay white but where it's crinkled up then I'll use the transparent grey to cover that. So really it's quite a simple um, colour break up with those three colours and what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the image onto two more sheets of lino so that I have a full sheet of lino for the yellow and a full sheet of lino for the grey and then I can start cutting away and I can take proofs and I can check and see how I feel before I go ahead and cut everything because it may be that I need less of a colour than I thought or I need more of a colour than I thought so I'm going to be a bit cautious about that. So the next thing I want to show you is how to start getting those colour blocks lined up correctly with the line block so that when I come to print, everything is going to be nicely lined up to create a colour lino cut. So having decided how many colours that I'm going to have for this print, I now need two more blocks of lino that are positioned to line up with my, my key block. So I have some lino here that I've already stained. If you want to know about staining and preparing lino, then do check out my other Lino with Laura series on YouTube where I have a, a, a film about that. Um, one little thing I would say is I've stained this and now I come to look at it, I can see it's got some little crumbs of Lino pressed to the surface. So I'm going to scrape those off. It's leaving like little, little freckles there. Always check the Lino for that on the surface you the, what happens is that you get these little tiny fragments of lino and they get sort of stuck down to the surface of the lino and when it arrives it has these crumbs on it so always do like a crumb check and it's you can take them off with the side of a thumbnail just so that they're not there because they're annoying if you get them and print and they're still there so let's just put that to one side so what i need to do next is to get my colour block in the right place. And if you've been following me for a while, you will know that I am completely rubbish at things like measuring accurately and right angles and stuff like that. So I have my line, uh, my line block here and like a complete idiot, I just sort of stuck it down by eye and didn't really think about it. So now I need to make an accurate measurement. So I am going to use a vernier. And these are gizmos, you can get them quite cheaply. And I find them really useful because it doesn't rely on me having to get things accurate to the millimetre. It's kind of going to do that job for me. So what I need to do is to draw myself the top and one side really accurately onto my backing board. So this is MDF. So this is uh, the board that's going to hold everything tight in the desktop registration device that I'm, I'm going to use to demonstrate with or also in my printing press. And I need to have a guideline there that I can bump my 
lino up to um, to get it in the right position. So to use the vernier, what I'm going to do, it, uh, it does have measurements all down the front, but I'm actually going to use the back of it because this little tail here is going to give me a nice guide measurement. So if I pull the top of it and it's just push that down and the reason I've turned it over is so that I have a little lip here to hold against the board and I push that down that gives me a really nice accurate gauge of where this is positioned on the block and I can just check it a little bit down on this side so as my mother would say I am a bit on the wonk here things are not quite straight so I know it needs to be a little bit longer here and a little bit lower there so rather than doing my head in about measuring millimeters all I'm going to do is use the vernier on that side and then I'm going to take another measurement at the other end Poor Mr. B is behind the camera wincing because he's really good with measurements and accuracy. And I'm, what can I say? I'm not very good at straight lines. So this is my method. Those of you who have a better grip of lining things up can probably just take simple measurements, but I'm doing it sort of uh, more freeform. And for that, a vernier is a really useful tool. So that's the top. And now I'm going to do exactly the same for the side. So again, I'm moving, moving the top part of the vernier to set the measurement. And again, I can just pop that there. And that's just taken. Oh, we're not so bad. Not, not so bad this time. And I can put a measurement down there. And that means that I can draw a nice, accurate frame with no pesky numbers involved. The other thing that I would say about doing this is that I have bought myself a little bit of leeway simply by having a black frame. When I was designing this print, I really wanted it to have a kind of I don't know, kind of uh, 1930s, 40s illustration vibe, which will tie in with the, the ochre and grey printing. But the other thing I, I wanted as part of that was for it to have a border, this sort of heavy black frame. And of course, if you've got a heavy black frame, it gives you a little bit of leeway with your colour blocks because anything that doesn't quite line up is going to be hidden under the hidden under the frame. So in an ideal world, that shouldn't be relevant. But, you know, in the real world, that's actually quite a useful thing to remember. So now I need to stick my lino down. And I want to stick these down permanently because I absolutely do not want them shifting. The artist support pledge prints that I do, you know, I need to print a fair few of them and I need everything permanently in place. So I'm going to use a flooring adhesive. This is the sort of adhesive that sticks down cork tiles, carpet tiles, that kind of thing. It just came from the DIY shop. Um, it doesn't matter which brand you use, but you need a bit of pressure. And what I'm going to do is just put a thin layer on the back of it. Okay, just get that open. And this is water-based, this glue. Um, you can just wipe the palette knife off afterwards with a damp cloth and it's absolutely fine. So I'm doing a thin layer over the lino and I'm making sure that I'm spreading that glue out. What you don't want to do is put like four clumps of glue on the back of it and then stick the lino down. And especially if you're using a press, because if you do that and you have like areas of thick glue and areas of no glue if you print on a press you may find that you get darker impressions where there's a more glue 
and lighter impressions where there's no glue, depending on, you know, sort of your paper and how sensitive things are. So it's just a good idea to spread the glue out nicely so that there's no higher and lower places there. So let's just get rid of that. And then I'm going to position it. Now, this glue, it needs a bit of a bit of force to get it to stick down. So I'm not going to do it on film, but as soon as we've stopped filming, I'm going to stand on this and just stick it down firmly. Alternatively, I could put it in the press and pack up the press with some card and pull it tight, and that would put enough pressure to get it stuck down properly. So if you have found this helpful and enjoyed this video, please can I ask you to like it and also subscribe to my channel. Um, you can mark up if you want to have alerts. That really helps me because it, it helps to work the algorithms and it keeps us making films. So thank you very much and I hope you'll be joining me again.